Bula Vinaka Fiji and a warm welcome once again to this week's episode of Speak Your Mind on Gold FM, only the classic hits. This is your only classic hits radio station in Fiji and uh, I'm Louise, your host. Now we have uh, our friend, a very familiar face. Yes, she is the voice of the consumer, the CEO of the Consumer Council of Fiji, Premila Kumar. A warm welcome once again to the show. Okay. Well, um, it is very nice to know that uh, you're back. And uh, well, before we start, uh, Pramila Kumar, I mean, you are such a famous person. I'd just uh, like to ask you just something like maybe uh, where were you brought up and where did you go to school in your younger days? Oh, this is interesting. Yes. Shifting away from consumer yeah, issues. After that, then we'll come to go <laughs> straight into it. Yes. All right. I was born in Suva. Okay. And I wow. come from a business community. My dad was a businessman. Okay. And all my three brothers are uh, in business. Okay. I got my education from Dudley as well as from MGM High School. Right. And after that, I went abroad and did my first degree, which was in Bachelor of Science. Mm hmm. And then, of course, got married and had kids. And then later on, I decided to do my master's degree. And wow. uh, for that, I traveled as far as Netherlands. Okay. And I studied my master's in trade and environment, came back and got back to my work. The usual work was at the Department of Environment. And then from there, I changed my job. From Department of Environment, I, I moved to Investment Fiji. Wow. And I was the manager trade uh, facilitation. And then within 14 months, I decided that I have to move. Probably the job didn't suit me. Yes. Uh, and I joined Consumer Council. So this is where I am today. For like how many years now? Uh, this would be the 10th year. 10th year. Well, mm. I mean, it's always good to do a job that you love. And obviously, you like to be a voice for the people. We need, we need uh, I mean, someone like you to be a voice I think this job is uh, satisfying uh, yes. more than anything else. It's, it's more like helping people and uh, guiding them and assisting them. And that gives me more pleasure than anything else. That's very nice to know, Pramila. Now I'm happy I know something about you, uh, despite seeing you all the time in media. I mean, uh, you used to come a lot when I was, uh, I mean, a lot, many years ago. And I used to say, man, um, she's a very pretty woman. And I was very happy to meet you, in fact, in face. And you haven't changed much from many, many years ago. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but all right. Now we're here to talk about the National Consumer Helpline. And uh, this was launched by the Attorney General and Minister of Economy, ISID Kayum in mid July. Now, uh, could you tell us how the Consumer Helpline got started? Well, uh, the only reason why the National Consumer Helpline um, was an in well, to start off with, National Consumer Helpline is the initiative of the government and the reason why it got started is simply because there was this big realization that whenever the government reduces duty and VAT, mm -hmm. somehow or the other it never gets passed on to consumers. And so there was this uh, idea of having a National Consumer Helpline because at the end of the day it's the consumers who are in the marketplace, they normally buy goods and services, they know the price and they would uh, be able to tell um, Consumer Council as well as the government whether that vet or duty has been passed on to them or not. Yes. So through pricing, the council will come to know whether the duty has been passed on or not. Yes. So that was really the reason why the National Consumer Helpline was set. Although the reason was uh, vet and duty monitoring. Right. Uh, but in fact, it is now widened where we receive all kinds of complaints related to uh, consumer issues. So... It's not just VAT and duty reduction. Mm -hmm. It's more like a, a format which consumers can use to lodge their complaints. And uh, that makes it uh, all the easier for you to gauge uh, which kind of complaints are coming in, which one are the serious ones that are being broken and all that. Yeah. So um, what is the number again? Uh, the number for National Consumer Helpline, we made it very short, simple and sweet. It's yeah. 155. Okay, so how can one find the number of the Consumer Helpline? I think I've seen it in the papers. We have been doing awareness raising on 155, mm -hmm. and you may have seen it as television advertisements. It's appearing on television, uh, in newspapers, uh, on radio. Uh, so we are trying to reach out to the public, simply telling them that they can dial 155, mm -hmm. and they can reach Consumer Council 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Wow. 
So is that toll free number free for like any telephone, mobiles, landlines? Yes. We had to make sure that uh, it doesn't matter which subscriber you subscribe to. It can be any mobile phone company, mm -hmm. but all these are linked to the council. So you can dial from any mobile yes. uh, handset and it will reach the council. So you can be a Vodafone subscri subscriber right. or Digicel subscriber or you've got a landline at home. If you just dial 155, it will reach Consumer Council. Right. So, uh, Premila, how does the helpline benefit the Fijian consumer? I think we have basically taken uh, Consumer Council in the house, uh, in know. the shopping mall, uh, anywhere. So, we have made it easier for them to access uh, council services. Right. Previously, they had other options. For example, they had to, uh, uh, they, they can send a complaint through internet. We had an online complaint system. Wow. So one had to access uh, internet, so which means you've got to have data and then log in and then send a complaint. So you can just fill it online? Yeah. Wow. But now it's a matter of uh, mobile phones. And if you look at the subscription number of how many people own mobile uh, phones, mm -hmm. it's quite uh, a large number of people. Almost uh, the household uh, who owns more than uh, one mobile phone. And every member of the family owns a mobile phone. Yes. So, so it simply means that if you have a mobile phone and you are in any part of Fiji and um, if you see something not right, mm -hmm. you can simply dial 155 and bring that issue to our attention. There you go. And uh, you also <coughs> mentioned how it was so good because um, it's, uh, it has access to ne nearly every consumer in the country. Mm. Like, I mean, like you've got offices, few offices, and then for those living in the interior, I suppose, or you know, far away from town, it must be really good for them too. Oh, exactly, because, you know, uh, from 155, when the calls come in, um, we have the call operators, uh, we have got a call center. So these operators, they normally respond to the call, and all this call gets logged onto the database. So from the database, we come to know um, how many people uh, genuinely reported a matter to us right. from which location. So it can be a call from Kandavu, it can be a call from Lao groups. And uh, we have been uh, getting calls from out islands. That's amazing. Mm. So, I mean, this has really reached out to the people. And for us now doing the talkback, we're going to get a lot of coverage too for, I mean, you know, just uh, creating awareness on uh, consumer matters. Now, uh, how is the council managing the calls for the National Consumer Helpline? Well, uh, to begin with, um, you know, on a daily basis, we get more than 50 uh, calls. Wow. So that's quite a big number, and it's quite challenging yes. uh, for the council. So obviously the first thing that I had to think about was how do I put in right strategies right? so that it's not just receiving the calls but attending to the calls. Yes. Receiving is very easy, yeah. but then looking at each and every call and what the consumer expects, that requires time and it also requires money. I'm so sorry to um, have, have having to interrupt there, Pramila, but uh, we'll be back shortly on Speak Your Mind, Gold FM, only the classic hits. We're back on Speak Your Mind, Gold FM, only the classic hits. And our guest in the studio we have is the CEO of the Consumer Council of Fiji. We're talking about the National Consumer Helpline, which uh, I must say we're very lucky to have Premila. And uh, just before the break, we were talking about how the council is managing the calls for this helpline. I mean, you said that you probably get more than 50 calls a day. And, uh, well, just uh, maybe you'd like to continue from where we left off. Okay. Yes, uh, we do receive more than 50 calls. And as I've said previously, mm -hmm. it's not about receiving the calls, but attending to the calls. Right. So for that, we've got additional uh, three staff, two are uh, operators, but three additional staff. Mm -hmm. And so we have created a consumer helpline, helpline division, and uh, we've got only five staff to look after all these complaints. So uh, what we we have worked out our own strategy as to how we can handle uh, these complaints. Okay. Um, and first thing we have done is like once we receive all the complaints, we try and remove uh, 
the non-genuine complaints. This is the um, prank calls, uh, blank calls, noisy calls. Right, so it's almost like filtering, mm. getting rid filtering. of the rubbish. And <laughs> yeah, and then we, we zoom to the genuine uh, complaints. Okay. So from the genuine complaints, like for example, uh, in the last uh, two weeks, we have received a total of uh, 739 calls. That's a lot. And then out of that, 334 yeah. were genuine complaints. Okay, so how did you establish that they were genuine, Pramila? Uh, they were genuine because they were talking about consumer issue. Okay. And they were talking about uh, what they have come across. So from these um, genuine uh, complaints or calls, uh, we tried to look at how many calls simply needed an advice. For example, the caller will say, how many days notice should I give to my tenant? So it's, a, oh. it's on the phone, you can just give the advice. Okay. So uh, we have attended to about um, 63 mm -hmm. advice. So in other words, we have given 63 uh, advice to the consumers based on the calls that they made. So really we, we, we classify that as case closed because that's all they wanted from the council, which we have given. Right. Then the other pending complaints, then we go further filtering and then we have to establish whether these complaints have got uh, evidence or not. Do we need further documentation? Right. So from the rest of the complaints, then we established that about 118 mm -hmm. callers who made calls to the council, yes. we needed information. Like if they're going to talk to us about insurance, then we need the insurance policy. Okay. If they're going to talk to us about higher purchase, we need the higher purchase document. If they're going to talk, uh, talk to us about uh, financial services, uh, for example, banks, yeah. then we need authorization from them so that we can access the information from the bank. Oh. So, so that is where what we call um, cases, which is genuine, mm -mm. but we cannot proceed unless and until they provide us with the information. The proper documents. Proper documentation. Yeah. And then there are calls made and they provide the documentation as well. Okay. After the call, they either email the documentation, they drop it at the office, or they send it by post. So that is a complete uh, complaint. Like we've got a complaint, we've got documentation, and it's time for the council to act on it. <clears throat> yes. So in that case, uh, in, in those cases, we have made uh, interventions. Uh, mm -hmm. We've been contacting the respondents. And we have actually solved uh, 28 complaints. Mm -hmm. And in total, so far, we have solved 88 complaints. Okay, so that's uh, uh, since the child helpline has... Sorry, consumer helpline. Consumer helpline has that, been... Yeah, right that is within, within two weeks. Wow, that's within amazing. Within two weeks, we have solved 88 complaints. Wow. But I would like to advise the consumers mm -hmm. that they are really our eyes and ears on the ground. Right. Uh, when they make a call, they need to provide that evidence because the Consumer Council is set up for them only. Right. This is This is a body for consumers. Right. And Consumer Council is only strong when consumers make the council strong. Exactly. In other words, if they are able to get the information um, uh, and bring it to our attention, then it's, that's how the council can become stronger right. uh, in its voice. We have seen cases where consumers complain when we go for a mobile unit or, or when we do our community visits and they talk about issues. But when it comes to them lodging a complaint to the council, they hesitate. Okay. You know, and, and I need um, calls or even complaints to be recorded. So you can't just meet me in the street and say, you know, you got to do something about uh, water authority. No, mm. you need to put it in writing to the council or use 155 to make that call okay. because each and every call is recorded. Right. So then it becomes a genuine call. It's a genuine concern from a consumer. So I need that kind of support from the consumers yes. so that only I can um, assist in solving that particular issue. I mean, uh, like uh, we were talking about uh, filtering the phone calls, uh, I think it would be really good if uh, people did make the call 
that uh, they're keeping in mind that they're keeping all the documents which uh, would be the important ones mm -hmm. like uh, what documents would be important for I'll, instance I'll give you an example mm -hmm. we had a call from uh, a person from the outer island and he was complaining about his insurance policy mm -hmm. and I we simply uh, told him that what we need from you is the insurance uh, policy mm -hmm. and any other information that you may have on the policy you have bought Mm -hmm. And also we need an authorization letter authorizing the council mm -hmm. to dig deeper and get the information from the insurance co uh, insurance company. Right. And that's precisely what this complainant did. He provided everything through mail. Wow. So now we've got that information and we can act on it. So that makes um, the call um, more fruitful. You know, you made a call and there is an action from us. Exactly. And it's more meaningful. Yeah. Uh, rather than having a uh, sort of a wrong attitude where you make a call and you simply say, go and check this shop, go and check that shop. Consumer Council is established not to check the shops mm -hmm. because there are other bodies that are supposed to be checking the shops. Yes. Right? Right. But when we get a genuine complaint, then we look at the complaint, we go to the shop, we see what's happening, then we write to the regulator. Okay. And we expect them to address the issue. Right. You see, so that that's how we work. Yes. Well, that is very interesting. But, uh, you know, I mean, just make it clear to the consumer that uh, just I think they shouldn't be wasting your time. I mean, if they want to lodge a complaint, make sure everything that you keep, your documents, you keep them properly and uh, you know that's solid. Like you said, if they're solid, the Consumer Council will yeah. be solid as well. Actually, I agree with what you were saying. I mean, this is one of the biggest problems we have. Uh, which we have noticed. Mm -hmm. I mean, people buy home through mortgage. Okay. You know, you take loan from the banks. Right. But if you ask any consumer who's got a mortgage, mm -hmm. very few will tell you that they've got a folder, a file, right. where all the papers have been filed into that folder. Right. Most consumers <gasps> just don't care. They'll have the documentation, but it can be in this drawer, that drawer. All over the uh, place. Ir irresponsibly kept. Right. And then they don't realize that one day they can need those documents. That's the proof, the evidence. Yeah, exactly. Because, you know, we have this tendency of consumers trusting too much. You know? Yeah. They just trust the financial institution. They just trust what the insurance company is telling. In fact, trust it becomes a major issue for them because at the end of the day, these companies are there for business. Right. And there'll be certain things they will not disclose. And okay. we have handled those cases. So I'm talking based on experience. Yes. We had cases where um, uh, the loan was taken and wrong interest rate were charged. Yes, I remember reading about that and I thought, man. And that... then we managed to talk to that bank and get $13,000 refunded. That's amazing. But we'll be back shortly. Sorry about that again, Pramila. Very interesting. Speak your mind on Gold FM, only the classic hits, and uh, educating the consumer today to do the right thing. Welcome back to Speak Your Mind on Gold FM, only the classic hits. Thank you a lot for your company. This is a live radio show, and uh, we have the delayed coverage shown on FBC TV. So if uh, you'd like to be a part of discussions, uh, you have uh, something to share with us very quickly, you can call 3220907, and uh, if you have a Digicel phone, 7732907. But uh, really interesting. With us, we have the CEO of the Consumer Council of Fiji. And uh, you know how you were saying, about recovering $13,000. Could you tell us more? Uh, this is uh, the reason why I'm sharing this is I'm just making consumers aware mm -hmm. that one should not be just having blind trust uh, when it comes to money. Uh, borrowing money from the banks to buy your home, borrowing money from the banks to buy your car, obviously you are borrowing money and you have to pay that loan. Yes. And that borrowing of that money means it comes at a cost. No one is going to give you free money. They'll yes. be charging interest. Yes. So this is where consumers need to find out what is the interest the banks are charging. So you compare. You compare and then you find the best 
the bank that offers the best deal. Right. And then you settle for it. What we have generally seen, what consumers do or what public do, if you have your cousin in one bank, you rely on that cousin. You ask your cousin, can you arrange that loan for me? And, and the next day you go and sign the papers and you're happy with it. Without even comparing whether you've been given the best rate. See? That's not how you do business. Yes. As a consumer, you need to be responsible. You need to understand that borrowing simply means it comes at a cost. Yeah, nothing is free, like you nothing said. Is That's free. your sweat. You're working hard. Why yeah. would you want to be letting money slip out and of your And therefore, you need to be very careful. What is the interest rate being charged? Now, interest rate can be charged for the number of years you've taken the loan. It can be five-year loan. It can be 10-year loan. It can be 15-year loan. Right. It can be 20-year loan. Mm -hmm. So the consumers need to compare. Mm -hmm. So if you go to the, say, you, you're going to another bank, again, you ask for the interest rate for five-year, 10-year, mm -hmm. 15, 20 so that you're comparing apples with apples. Right. And not apples with something else. Right. You see? Yes. So, so that's where the importance of financial literacy comes in. And unfortunately, I mean, this is my experience working in the consumer world for 10 years. I can say with confidence that, unfortunately, when it comes to financial products, when we talk about financial products, yes. consumers cannot visualize they cannot feel the product, they cannot touch, they cannot see, they cannot taste. Mm -hmm. And therefore, they are far removed from those financial products as compared to goods they buy in a supermarket. If you walk into a supermarket, you can see a packet of biscuit, you can feel the biscuit, you can read, you can taste, uh, you can say that, you know, last time I bought it for this much, why the price has gone up. But mm -hmm. when it comes to financial products, like you're taking unsecured loan. Yeah, it seems like the person just wants to get it and thinking yeah. the bank is actually doing a favor for them. Exactly. And, uh, and then they just don't think, you know, look behind the scenes like what you're saying. So they, they're not, when you talk about unsecured or secured loan, you, you don't know because it's a money you're borrowing. You, you can't feel, you can't touch. Yeah. And therefore you have not got more experience in that area. Exactly. So that's where... Um, the consumers are taken advantage of. And that's the real area where we need to target to protect the consumers. Right. Because there is imbalance of knowledge as well as imbalance in power. Exactly. I mean, that is just so good. So what would uh, you advise uh, a consumer who wants to go take out, maybe, for example, a home loan? What, is, what are the main documents that they're supposed to keep and know about? I think, first of all, it's very important for a consumer to understand his or her borrowing capacity. How much money can I borrow? So you have to look at your own income. Right. And you need to disclose all this information very correctly to the bank. Okay. Don't try and hide because at the end of the day, you can get into financial problems. Yeah, not and keeping up with paying your loan with back your, or something. With your payments. And that's right. when the banks can be knocking on your door trying to recover that money. Awful. You know? yeah, and so I know. so it's, it's very important. That's step number one, that you need to know what is your ability. Okay. You know, how much can you borrow? So you borrow within your means. Yes. And you should not borrow so much that, uh, you know, your life is affected and uh, obviously there can be conflicts in the, in the home, uh, you know, when you're not able to get the right food or you're not able to pay the bus fare or you're not able to uh, buy the books for your children or you're not able to even go for a movie once in a while, know, then there eh? is a problem. So you yes. need to be a little bit relaxed uh, yes. in the sense that only borrow what you can pay. Right. And when you want to borrow, then the next step is for you to understand if you're going to do an unsecured loan, then you go to all the banks where you want to access unsecured loan. Try and understand what is the interest rate, what would be the repayment amount, and as I have said, if it is unsecured for five years, then you must compare for all five years from all the banks. Wow. And then you make a confirmed, you know, um, you, you, you can make a, a, a good decision on it. Yes. Rather than... Um, going in blindly. Just going in and just because a bank has approved your loan, mm -hmm. you come out excited. <laughs> Not knowing I mean, that's that why banks are there. I mean, yeah. How else will the banks make money? They're business. If they don't give, yeah, if they don't give loans. 
<laughs> so consumers need to understand that. And that is such good advice and uh, I'm sure that uh, we really appreciate you sharing that with us. But yep, yeah, we've run out of time again. We'll be back in a moment on Speak Your Mind Gold FM, only the classic hits. Thank you a lot for your company. Speak your mind, Gold FM, only the classic hits. We're back. Thank you so much for being with us. And uh, very interesting to be talking to the CEO of uh, the Consumer Council. And, uh, man, thank you for sharing that wonderful information and uh, just waking people up that, uh, you know, going to a bank is, uh, you know, the bank is not doing you a favor. You've got to be really careful on your part too. But anyhow, we'll move on with uh, what uh, we originally talking about, the National Consumer Helpline. Now, what has uh, the response been like so far since the Consumer Helpline was launched two weeks ago? I think the uh, response is very good. Uh, I feel the consumers uh, are aware of uh, 155 because that's why they're making the calls. Excellent. And they're coming up with uh, genuine calls. Mm -hmm. uh, after analyzing the calls, we have found that the top, number one complaint that mm -hmm. we have received through Consumer Helpline is food and drinks. In other oh. words, this is when people go out into restaurants to eat oh, okay. and they feel that uh, the food is stale or the food has got some other insects or uh, things that you don't need. Oh dear. You know? Or sometimes uh, we have also received complaints where the, the quantity of the food and the price don't match. Like you pay high price for your food, mm -hmm. but the quantity is very small. Mm -hmm. So they have complained about that. They've also complained uh, about uh, the general increase in price of uh, restaurant food. And this is a big issue, and this is mm. what we have found. Mm -hmm. I mean, we all know that the government has introduced uh, service turnover tax as well as environmental levy. Right. But service turnover tax and environmental levy is not meant for each and every restaurant in this country. Yeah. The way each and every restaurant is trying to increase the price is unacceptable. It's only meant for those restaurants yeah. and um, uh, what do you call uh, cafes, etc., where they have a high turnover. These are small corner uh, restaurants, small timers, even they have increased their price. Oh, my gosh. So it's, it's a question of um, how can consumers know whether that restaurant is paying STT or not. Right. Because it can be a case where, as a consumer, you are paying service turnover tax, uh -huh. but that may not be reaching FERCA. So they have increased the price of food, saying that they are, uh, the increase is because of environmental levy and STT, uh -huh. but that may not be the case. Oh, so, so it is it is a concern, and that's why consumers have been uh, bringing this issue to our attention. So, how are we to know? Like uh, you were saying, like big businesses, eh, the ones that are rolling in like big dollars, they're the ones yeah. who probably have it, and they have like a notice up or something. There is no notice, so consumers oh. will never know, and oh. that's why if consumers uh, feel that they have paid more than what they should have, and it's because of uh, they're saying that, you know, because of STT or environmental levy. Would that be on a receipt of some sort? Not even, uh, eh? It should be there. Yeah, but some uh, but not sometimes them. they don't even give receipts. So, oh. And consumers oh. are not even demanding a receipt. Yeah. So that becomes a problem. <laughs> but if they do have a receipt, or even if they don't have a receipt, mm -hmm. but they've eaten at a place and they feel that, yeah. you know, the food price cannot be that high, mm -hmm. they can bring it to our attention and we can do further investigation uh, to understand whether they have charged STT or environmental levy to increase the price. Okay. And we can get that information from FERCA. Thank you, yeah. Pramila. So after the food and then... Then we have got uh, landlord and tenancy issues. Oh, yeah, that's a famous uh, that's, one. That, eh? That's a very big issue and it's more to do with uh, uh, landlords uh, evicting the tenants. Okay. Uh, the notice period is not given... Uh, you know, appropriately. Yeah. Which is one month before. Uh, one month's right? notice, yeah. written notice must be given. Yeah. Also, we have got issues where the, the roof is leaking, the house is not in a, in a good condition, uh, you know. Yeah. So th that, th those type of uh, complaints come to us. Yes. Uh, Water Authority of Fiji is another, that's number three. 
Sir. So people are complaining about water authority and, and their complaints are more to do with mm. we have paid for the new meter. Yes. Uh, but the meter has not been installed. So. Or the new meter has been installed, but why is my bill so high? So th these are some of the general complaints. Right. We also received a complaint from uh, interior of uh, Lambasa mm. where the wells had uh, dried up and they needed water. Oh. And they've been calling uh, Water Authority for, for water to be transported to them. Oh dear. But nothing was happening. So when they called the council, the Lambasa office managed to uh, call Water Authority there. And get some action done. Yes, and they managed to transport the water in that interior But area. that's sad because, like you said, that person had actually approached them, but they didn't do anything about it. Mm. They had to get in touch with you to get something done. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's where yeah. you come in as a great help too. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then we have complaints against uh, electronic goods. Uh, it's yeah. more to do with, you know, they're buying electronic goods, they've bought rice cooker or, mm -hmm. or they've bought electrical kettle or, and it's not functioning and warranty is an issue. When they take it back to the shopkeeper, they don't want to repair, they want to charge more money. So these issues have come to us and that's where we need receipts. Uh, for receipts, <clears throat> consumers normally say that uh, um, the receipt has faded or I have lost my receipt. You mm -hmm. know, in this day and age, that's a lame excuse, particularly mm -hmm. when you have a mobile phone. Yeah, that's something you know, that you've said is really good. Very important. And I encourage consumers to mm. use their mobile phone to click uh, the photo of your receipt. Gee. So you can have that. And that's an evidence. Wonderful. Because actually, it's true. Sometimes the receipts, if you keep them for a long time, I've noticed that. It mm. fades out. Even the ones when you get from the bank, the ATM, mm. like uh, after a while, you'll see the prints completely mm. gone. Mm. Mm. So that would, that's a perfect idea. Just keep taking pictures of your receipts. Exactly. Uh, and that's very important. Like, mm. for example, even if you have bought any item on higher purchase, you've paid the money, mm -hmm. you can just click a photo of that. If the repairs were done, just click a photo. See? Because it can help you anytime. Right. You know? Because without receipts, the consumer has absolutely no power whatsoever. And how can Consumer Council do anything for that person? Exactly. And sometimes the consumers will say that, you know, I've lost the receipt, but can you get the receipt for me? I mean, how can we get a receipt for you? <laughs> you know, there is something Sorry, called I consumer. Have to laugh at that you know, there is something called consumer responsibility. Yes. It's not always your rights because rights come with responsibility. Exactly. So I, I'm just, um, you know. Uh, urging consumers to be smart mm -hmm. and uh, these are some of the practical problems they may face mm -hmm. as i've said they can lose the receipt etc but it's good to just capture it on your mobile phone perfect now how long does it take for a case to be investigated and settled i mean obviously pretty fast because you already mm -hmm. said that you've solved so many in just three weeks well uh, simple cases can be solved in a day through a phone call mm -hmm. In other words, the staff can make a phone call to the respondent and if they agree to provide the redress, the matter is solved. Right. But sometimes the cases are very, very complicated and mainly to do with financial services. If it's to do with insurance and banks and loans and whatnot, or for that matter, higher purchase, it can take much longer. Yeah, can you imagine? So it can be like six months, sometimes mm. it can be seven months, it can mm -hmm. drag on mm. because, you know, it requires analysis of the information. After analyzing, it's back and forth with the respondent because they will argue that this is, this is correct and we will argue this is not correct. So, yeah. so our arguments uh, and, <laughs> and, and uh, evidence uh, becomes very crucial. Okay. So it can take longer time. Okay. But simple cases can be solved on the day. It depends on, on the nature of the case. Vinaka Pramila. We'll be back in a moment on Gold FM, only the classic hits. Speak your mind. Speak your mind on Gold FM, only the classic hits. A warm welcome back to the show with uh, the CEO of the Consumer Council of Fiji who has shared so much uh, great information. I mean, protecting the rights of the consumer. And I really like what you've shared with us uh, today, Premila, and uh, just uh, still on uh, the National Consumer Helpline. 
Now, uh, I've said that uh, how you, it takes uh, how long to investigate and get settled, and you've explained about the more complicated ones take much longer. And, uh, well, the one that I'm really interested in also is uh, with uh, the rent freeze. Mm -hmm. how, how does that work? Are there certain people in this area that can actually raise their rent or is there no one at all supposed to raise no, their rent? it's a law. An order has been passed and the order is called rent freeze order. Oh. It simply means that from uh, 1st of January mm -hmm. till 31st of December, 2016, no one can raise the rent of the Any property. Any property? No, they can't. See? Except for commercial rent. Commercial okay. rent is not covered under rent freeze. Residential rent is covered under rent freeze. Oh, so, so that's really clear. You've yeah. made that clear now. So that's the difference. That's the difference. And oh. it simply says that you cannot increase the rent. However, if you do intend to increase the rent just because you've renovated the property or you have made some changes. Yes. You need to put it in writing to Fiji Commerce Commission. Mm -hmm. You have to get the approval from the minister. Oh. And then only you can increase the rent. Okay, so that becomes legal. Yes. But unfortunately, uh, there are landlords who are beating the system. <laughs> and when they want to increase the rent, they just give eviction notice to the consumer saying that, you know, I mm. need to renovate the place. Mm -hmm. So as soon as they leave... That's a common one, yeah? Very common. Mm. And then the new set of tenants who walk in, mm -hmm. they don't even know what was the rent previously, and they are mm. charged more. So that's what happens. But this year, the government has also passed uh, the order, uh, which very clearly says that Fiji Commerce Commission mm -hmm. can go to that landlord mm -hmm. and ask for the tenancy agreement yes and the landlord must keep all the receipts okay and it, it back dates so commerce commission can then collect the receipts and the tenancy agreement and they can do further investigation so if the landlord is found to be um, cheating then he or she will be penalized by commerce commission there is a on spot fine of thousand dollars if i'm not mistaken well there you go some more great information from our friend mm -hmm. here. But uh, another one Premila was thinking about uh, was, uh, now it gets to me, like uh, with uh, the businesses, like banks, eh? we've been talking about uh, how uh, people just go blindly and uh, they don't, uh, they just want to get the money, but they don't think what will happen after that. I mean, mm -hmm. like you said, they can't afford even to go to a movie. Mm -hmm. prob that'll probably cause a lot of stress. I mean, trying to, pay off something which they thought that was easy in the beginning, but it's not. Actually, a bigger concern today is, if you read today's Fiji Times, it talks about uh, people who will be retiring, they will have only $10,000 in their Provident Fund because they've been withdrawing the Provident Fund all along. Right. And, and when they will retire, they'll have mm -hmm. only $10,000. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is so small yes. for a Retirement. life ahead of you. Man. You know, and particularly when you don't have a job. Yeah. And uh, this is where, again, um, public need to realize that it's a retirement fund. It's your pension fund. You need to save that money for your old age yes. or when you retire from your job, when you don't have any work. I mean, because another problem is when you're old and you become dependent on whoever, your children or you know, maybe your nephew and niece, uh, you won't feel good. It's good to yes. be independent then, you know. Exactly. And we have seen what happened when uh, the government uh, allowed uh, people to draw their money during Cyclone Winston. Mm -hmm. There were people who withdrew money even though they didn't need that money. And they blew up that money by buying mobile phones, by having mm -hmm. party at their home, by going to the nightclubs and yeah. whatnot. And that money is wasted. Yes, not this, thinking of ahead. Uh, ahead, yes. And this is where, you know, one has to live within the means. If you're going to just splash money on things that will not give you any return, you are losing out. Yes. You have to think in business terms. Even if that money you had taken out from FNPF, if you had uh, invested it or made uh, or extended your home, 
or created another bedroom and rented it out, that's an income for you, mm -hmm. right? But if you just withdrew that money and you just spent it on your friends, you've wasted your pension money. Yeah. Or just buying a very expensive mobile phone. What for? Yeah. Exactly. You know? I mean, it could so, get lost so, in a minute too. So for too. consumer protection, I mean, responsibility mm. comes in and we always say, mm -hmm. live within your means. You just have to live within your means. Yes, exactly. Because uh, what, there's another thing my, that reminds me of what my grandfather used to say. Um, living a champagne life on a beer income. <laughs> that was one I really liked and I thought, yeah, so that's exactly what you mean. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, you know, you go make a loan for a house and everything. Everything seems so good when you're getting it done, but then the problem comes later. And I'm sure, mm -hmm. I think the, you guys also help people who have just got themselves into debt. They can't even get Ex out because they're yeah. suffocated. We, we do have a debt management unit in the office and we provide free service. Man. Uh, so if anyone is struggling with uh, mortgage issues, mm -hmm. we don't pay the mortgage. Mm -hmm. We don't have the money to pay. Right. But we can assist you based uh, on certain provisions within the Consumer Credit Act. Wow. In other words, if a consumer is facing hardship mm -hmm. and they're not able to make the payment, mm -hmm. the Consumer Council can assist. That's wonderful. We can also assist in consolidating loans. If you have too many loans here and there, we mm -hmm. consolidate it into one, mm -hmm. and then you make that payment uh, on a monthly basis. Just to make it easier for the consumer. Yes, correct. Yeah, correct. That's so yes. good. I mean, gosh, uh, it's this kind of things where you'll be stressed, you could even die young, if uh, you know, you're in this problem, and to know that the Consumer Council has these services for the consumer, that's really good. Mm. Thank you so much, uh, Premila. I mean, maybe next time we'll cover something else. Yes, yes we uh, can do that. Yes. Unfortunately, we've run out of time. But thank you so much for coming in. My pleasure. Now, until next time, speak your mind on Gold FM, only the classic hits. I'm Louise. Thank you so much for your company. Until next week.